Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia. And today we're going to be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains episode 116. And overall, I really did enjoy this episode, both from a character development and from a dueling perspective. There was a lot of emotion shown in this episode, and we had some new cards shown that were pretty cool as well. And just the overall meaning uh, behind this episode about moving forward after loss or hard times, and finding that path that you need to go down, or should go down, to live your life to the fullest, was just great, and it made this episode even more enjoyable overall. So then, we start off with the duel's continuation, and what Revolver states before we have the intro was fitting for his character, and I just liked it, loved it even, when he told Soulburner, that once he lost a fire ignis that was his compass soul burner is now like a wandering ship lost in the same area and that that was fitting as the background in where soul burner is um you know in the current setting they're in the lost instant area so that line mixed together with the kind of Meaning behind it, I found, was really cool. And I just loved that line from Revolver right off the bat once the episode opened. So then, Revolver doesn't hold anything back. We never expected him to. He goes in full force on his turn, and he starts drawing a load of cards. Uh, summons Barrel Sword Dragon, thanks to uh, the card, I think, called Half Barrel, and its effect. He gets Barrel Load back out. Um, and then he synchro summons into um, Barrel Load Savage Dragon. And then, thanks to his effect, Savage Dragon's effect, um, he's able to put counters onto the card by taking Barrel Sword Dragon from his graveyard and equipping it to Savage Dragon. Obviously giving him four counters because the counters placed onto Savage Dragon is equal to the amount of link markers onto the link card that you equipped to Savage Dragon. As well as the fact is he gets half of the attack points that Barrel Sword has. So this gives Savage Dragon a total of um, 4,500, which everything that we've seen up to this point from Revolver's turn has just been combo after combo after combo. But the plays don't stop there as we get a new Topologic card. In the form of a Link 4 Topologic um, Zorbos, Zorbos. And this design is pretty menacing, and his effect is just ter as terrifying as his appearance. So it gains 200 attack points for every banished card. And then, when a monster is special summoned uh, next to his Link marker, it banishes all the cards on the field. So that, with the effect of gaining 200 attack points for every card banished, you think is pretty good, but hold on a minute. Doesn't um, Zorbus basically get banished as well? Well, no, because it can return from banishment. And that is his other effect. So all in all, this card is very strong and very powerful, especially if you've got someone that... You know, say for example, your whole field, your opponent's whole field's out, so they got five face down monsters, five spell and trap cards. Banish that, that's an extra 2,000 attack you're adding to your card, to your monster, and that's not including your own cards on your field that you just banished. However, Soulburner is not looking too hot right now, as he's staring down or up, depending on his size, which I'm pretty sure would be up. Um, because compared to these monsters, he's probably pretty small. <laughs> he's looking up, or down, to three of Revolver's ace monsters. And after some brutal attacks, where even Soulburner's trap cards are countered, thanks to Savage Dragon's effect, he barely hangs on. He looks very beaten and very worn out, and he's taken some heavy damage both physically and to his life points. But even after all of that, he still can't catch a break, because this is where we learn 
about Zorbus' effect, the fact that it can banish all cards on the field if a monster is special summoned to his link. Because once Revolver ends his turn, that's what happens. Thus, making Revolver's sort of plan to destroy Chimera successful and Soulburner's attempt to keep Chimera um, futile. So that was very good in my personal opinion. I liked the way that it was going and throughout this whole kind of Revolver's turn, the animation was great and the combinations, they were a bit hard to follow if you're not a competitive player like myself, but it seemed to work really nicely and everything seemed to flow well. I like the fact is at the end of last episode, we had a very confident Revolver turn, a uh, Soulburner turn even, and now this episode to start off with, we're having a very confident um, menacing turn from Revolver. There's a lot of back and forth, and I like that. Then we get to what I think is one of the best parts from this arc, and that is the inner struggles of Soulburner. So much good development happens for his character in this bit, and after Revolver talks about Soulburner being trapped without a path to follow, we learn that Soulburner has actually been living with some heavy guilt. You know when you're a kid and your parents tell you to do something and you don't want to do it so you shout at them, you have a go at them, you basically say some horrible things but you don't actually mean it. You're just a bit angry and upset at the time. Well, it turns out that Soulburner did this but before he could apologise, she got captured and was made part of the lost incident. So, ever since being saved from the lost incident and finding out that his parents, even after everything that he supposedly said to them before he disappeared, they still went out to look for him because they still cared for him that much. And he's living with the guilt of saying this and not being able to say sorry to his parents. Now, we don't actually know what the horrible thing is because as Re Soulburner states, <laughs> she states that He's trapped in so much fear, which stops him from remembering. He can't remember what he said, and therefore he can't apologise. He doesn't know how to apologise to the dead or the deceased, because he doesn't know what he said. And he's been living with this, and to see this from a character that's very confident and very sort of passionate like Soulburner is, it's actually a nice change of pace, and I really did appreciate it. And again, Revolver says a line that I absolutely loved in this episode. And it applies to pretty much everything, not just Yu-Gi-Oh, but it applies to like real life in general. Those who have got those who are gone haven't completely vanished from your life. They just went ahead earlier. Now that line to me was actually really good. I actually like that because even like applying it to the real world scenario. Even if we lose the people that we're close to and we love, they're still with us. They still want us to move on and to have a good life, to be happy. They're just going on a little bit earlier, so there's no need for us to rush to catch up to them. Again, this is what Soul uh, Revolver is trying to teach Soulburner. He's trying to make it so that Soulburner can move forward when Soulburner feels like he's trapped and can't move anywhere. And I'm not sure if it was linked or intentional, but Zoroboros' Zor effect, or other effect, as to banish and resummon itself, is that meant to tie in with the line that I just mentioned Revolver saying about never truly being lost or uh, how things can seem lost but come back? I don't know, I guess it's just a weird coincidence, but I found that pretty funny. So, after overcoming his emotional struggles, thanks to Flame uh, in his mind, I presume, because Flame's completely gone at the moment, reminding him that all of his family, plus Flame, I guess Flame kind of counts as family at this point, are still with him in spirit. And Sol Bernard manages to get the W over Revolver, and all in all, I'm actually okay with the way this duel ended. The way that they handled this whole situation... Um, has been great, 
and Solberner getting the win kind of had to happen to prove that he overcame his problems. The fact that he's overcome his struggles and he can now live life, as he states, um, in a way that would make his parents proud, you know, he had to kind of win to prove that. And yes, although I would have liked Revolver to win, um, but all in all, what Revolver has done both in this episode and in last week's episode has been brilliant. And the whole thing about Revolver trying to help Soulburner out was a nice touch as well. And honestly, Revolver was in a win-win situation at this point. Because let's face it, Revolver has shown to be quite considerate and quite caring of those around him, especially those who have been involved in the lost incident. He's wanted to help Soulburner, and honestly, I don't think he would have wanted Playmaker to fight I, as he knows that Playmaker would struggle to fight against a friend. So this bravado that we had last week of Soul, uh, Revolver basically saying, you know, you're going to let I go because of this and that, and being quite harsh and quite critical to Playmaker, I think it was just a front to kind of make out the fact that he just doesn't want Playmaker to fight his friend. So, if Revolver wins the duel against, or won against uh, Soulburner, he would still be able to help Playmaker out, even though he didn't help Soulburner out. But because he lost to Soulburner, he was managed to help Soulburner out, but not help Playmaker out. I know that kind of doesn't make sense, and I hope it did, but you can kind of catch what, what I'm saying, kind of, hopefully, maybe. But all in all, some great animation and great character development. A good duel as well, and I would highly recommend for anyone who's a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! to go and watch these two duels, oh, well, this duel and this episode in particular, if you haven't done so already. Now that is going to end the review, so if you've liked this video, then smash that like button, subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me, and also let me know all your thoughts on this episode down in the comment section below. If there's anything that I miss, then flag it up and I'll, uh, I'll respond back. But other than that, guys, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.